everything in evidence was 0.4% of my tweet stream. So, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I was not guilty of a lot of things I was accused of. A few days ago, I flew out to Toronto to witness one of the largest victories for free speech in our time. As many of you know, Gregory Allen Elliott was found innocent of criminal harassment charges made by feminists who felt harassed by him sending tweets. The judge came to the conclusion that Stephanie Guthrie, Paisley Ray, and Heather Riley may have felt harassed by disagreement and tweets sent to them, but that their feelings were not reasonable. I think what his honor said today in his judgment is that if you're defending yourself and you're speaking politically, you don't have to worry about someone's fear being reasonable. And that's really, I think, the most important thing that came out of this judgment. You're allowed to express yourself as long as you're not speaking in a threatening manner. You're allowed to express yourself on Twitter. And if a person becomes fearful, that fear will not be reasonable. Throughout the case, the mainstream media was not there for Greg. And if they did report on the trial, they would harshly misrepresent it in favor of Guthrie and her friends. Christy Blatchford of the National Post and Milo Yiannopoulos of Breitbart were some of the few people along with Rebel who really presented this case honestly. The honest truth being that Greg lost three years of his life. His job, suffered through an internet ban, garnered around $100,000 in legal fees, and was slandered by the media for sending the same tweets that many of us send every day when we get into Twitter arguments. In the end, that tough battle won and protected our Canadian rights to disagree and to be offensive. Our freedom of tweets. After the trial, Craig sent his first tweet in over three years and two months, surrounded by friends and family who supported him throughout the process. The oh, the big blue tweet button. Okay, you wanna see it? See it, yeah. see it there? Da, 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 da. Did it work? There. Tweet, tweet yeah, there it is, man. <laughs> He's now on his way to rebuilding his life as an artist. He still has legal fees to pay, but if success continues with his fundraiser, I'm sure he'll be able to get over that hurdle. Myself and many others are unbelievably relieved and thankful for how things turned out. But it's still a hollow victory. This was a battle that never should have been necessary. Our lack of respect for the free speech that has been fought over, that people have died over, is disgusting. And there are still people out there attacking Greg, people who are part of the mainstream media, who refuse to accept the judge's verdict, and simply choose to live in their delusion. What they don't seem to realize is that on Friday, Elliot didn't just save the internet for himself. Him and his lawyer didn't just defend free speech for one man. They defended it for all of us, including the likes of Stephanie Guthrie, Heather Riley, Paisley Ray, and those who continue to slander him. This certainly isn't the last battle to be fought for free speech. There will be many more. But I'm very confident that we'll keep winning as long as there are people willing to stand up for our inalienable right to speak our minds.